Felix here. Why has the euro just crashed? Why does it matter to you? Why could it be good news for you, depending on just where you are in the world? That's what we're going to look at here. How far is it going to drop? What is going to make it turn around and who benefits? So let's properly understand this. Before we do that, I want to encourage you to do one thing and one thing only, and that's get your paws on Goldman's top 23 dividend growth stocks. It's a beautiful benchmark. I made it just for you. And I'd highly recommend you take advantage of it. It's completely free. My cat agrees. If you heard that meow just. So felixfriends.org slash 23, felixfriends.org slash 23 is what you want to be looking for. Now, parity is here. Uh, this is Bloomberg chart. And you, you can see where we are. It's been literally 20 years since we were at such levels, and, and it's not something Europe was looking forward to. Why does it matter? Why is it sinking so much? So essentially, Europe is suffering from the Ukraine-Russian war in terms of energy prices, massive energy inflation. Just to give you a picture here in France, energy futures, the cost of an energy unit was 50 euros about nine months ago. Now it is 700 700, that's 14-fold, and that, of course, is going to deter any manufacturing, any producer to make anything here at all if they can help it, right? So that's what's going on here. So you got, at the same time, the U.S. Federal Reserve raising interest rates like mad, whereas the Europeans were kind of asleep at the wheel because they, well, they've got this weakening economy and they also have all those southern European states with high debt levels who can't really afford to pay for higher interest rates on their debt. So therefore, they are in a bit of a tough spot. So what does the inflation actually then do to Europeans? So the weak euro, rather. Well, I answered my question there. It causes inflation. It causes import inflation. So pretty much anybody who manufactures anything imports stuff. And if your local currency is lower, it means your input costs go up even higher, and therefore it exacerbates the existing massive inflation problem already. So imports getting more expensive. Now, a lot of people are talking about this parity level, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, you know, one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, you know, the dollar and the euro being at one-to-one, -one -one, essentially. Uh, that is, of course, more psychological. It's more like, you know, a, a, a kick to the ego of the Europeans, but it doesn't matter quite as much. What matters a lot more is if you think about how far can this go? Could the do euro go below the dollar? Yup, absolutely. Uh, there are some analysts who are predicting 0 0.90, although most analysts are looking more at sort of 0 0.95 to 0 0.98 mark, which is still pretty staggeringly low. Now, is this a real problem for the euro? Well, I don't think it's an existential crisis for the euro. I think the existential crisis for the euro is a, it's part of its makeup. It's part of having not a fiscal policy, but that's a different subject uh, we, we're not going to get into. Um, now, this chart here, again, thanks to Bloomberg, explains quite a lot of it, and that's essentially you're seeing this going down. What happens when this goes down, and what is this? Well, it's French PMI, Manufacturing Output Services, and German data as well, and they are all pointing in the same direction. French data just surprised the market today with essentially what looks like a recession following the Germans here. So prepare, brace for impact, essentially. And is this going to get sorted soon? No. And then let's talk about who actually benefits from this. Um, the Belgian prime minister came out today and says, we need to prepare for 10 years of hard winters, essentially, because that's how long he thinks it's going to take to change the infrastructure and the fundamental energy input makeup that's provided the Russian uh, crisis, Ukraine war lasts that long. But, you know, if you talk to people in, in the commodity space, they are basically saying two to three years minimum uh, till this problem kind of gets solved. You know, it takes time to build the storage and the infrastructure and, and the um, also imported gas that comes from by, by ship is significantly more expensive. Now, there is a beneficiary to this, and it is the United States. The United States benefits from this. Why? Well, Europe exports a heck of a lot of stuff to the U.S., the Americans at home, if it, is, if it is you, it helps you to lower your inflation rate if you can buy things cheaper that are made in Europe because the euro is lower. You basically get more euros for your American dollar. Who is it also good for? Tourists. 
US American tourists. So come and enjoy the beauties of the European countries uh, this late summer and it'll all cost you a heck of a lot less. But on a more slightly more serious subject, um, um, the whole Americas uh, accounts for about 40% of sales for literally 70 very large uh, companies. Uh, Sanofi, for example, is one of those, or um, Egon. Uh, there are quite, quite a few of these that are massively exporting to the Americas overall. So those stocks should benefit from this, even though their input costs might be affected. They might, in the end, actually come out as beneficiaries. Now, why was I showing you the United States Red Book Index? Just to show you the difference between the US and Europe. This is an index of the big box stores. What are they selling? The like-for-like -like sales um, year on year. And they're up 13.5%. So the US consumer is strong, armed with his credit card, and they are spending very much the opposite of what you're seeing in Europe. Now, who's also strong and spending? Well, not spending, but some of my students, if you've watched me for the first time, I teach options trading amongst other things. Uh, here is Andrea, one of my students. He's just made $900. I think that was on Monday in literally six hours. Now, that's not the sort of trade we actually aim for, but it happens occasionally. But much, much more impressively uh, for Andrea is that he has managed to make $4,000 in the last three weeks, um, which is a 20% return. Now, you might think that's crazy. That must be super risky. It really isn't. Uh, he's just doing options trades, spreads essentially, 80 to 90% probability for each trade. And he's doing it right. He's diversifying quite nicely, although he could, he could leave the... Uh, the tech space a little bit here, except for, for Target and RCL. He's pretty techy. I'll have a word with him. But you know, he's doing super well. And that's basically what I want to see in the community. That's what people are doing. Uh, this is my portfolio here, which is up 118% so far on the year. And again, if you doubt that, which you might well do, which is a reasonable thing to do, drop me an email. It's also in the description. And I will send you the portfolio so you can audit it yourself. I do most of these trades live, and I certainly announce them as soon as I do them to the community. So there is, uh, is a real account accountability here because I appreciate how important that is for many, but you take any sort of, well, views from on investing uh, and, 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 so, and so forth. So that's what we keep doing. We make loads of money. If, if you want to join that, uh, check it out. Link is down below. Where did it go? Uh, here it is. FelixFriends.org slash options is our program. Uh, write down that coupon code freedom because that's what gets you there. It, my, my mission and my plan here really is just to get 100,000 students to financial freedom. And I mean real generational wealth freedom. So for that, I teach you both investing in stocks and also trading here with options, which is, of course, a really great way to create that extra income stream without spending you know, a huge amount of time on it. Probably I spend three hours a week or so on this at present, and I'd highly recommend it. So check it out. Um, and yeah, simply... I want to say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed these little uh, macro currency type updates, uh, do let me know in the comments down below. There's a cat lurking in the background. Uh, I'm promised some furniture next week, so the room will look a little bit less sparse if you're wondering what the heck happened behind me. And I truly appreciate you watching and tuning in. I hope to see you on the next one.